good afternoon everyone uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, uh, professor bala sir uh, for providing orika this opportunity to present in front of this audience and uh, uh, and i would like to thanks all the delegates who have arrived here and the delegates on the dais so today's presentation this presentation will revolve around the use of electronic blasting systems for fragmentation improvement and environmental control so since we have uh, if we talk about the uh, history of initiation system we have started from safety fuse and now we have reached to the uh, point of electronic detonator so i'll just uh, share few case studies which revolves around how we can improve the fragmentation and how we can improve the productivity with the help of electronic detonators and how we can manage the environmental impacts as well how we can control the vibrations and air operation results and uh, uh, which in turn will help us in managing the LTO uh, effects of uh, the vibration blasting activities. Okay, so I'll just introduce myself quickly. I'm Shivam and I'm a graduate from ISM Dhanbad and currently I'm working as a technical service engineer with Aurika and we have with us Mr. Abhishek who is, a, uh, uh, who is currently a business development and territory manager for uh, uh, <coughs> tunneling and uh, trade, uh, trade and construction segment. Okay, so uh, let me introduce what Aurika is, since few of you uh, guys must not be aware about Aurika. So Aurika is the number one global supplier of commercial explosive in the world. And we are the biggest explosive supplier and manufacturer. And apart from supplying the explosives and uh, 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 initiation systems, we also provide uh, different services, vibration monitoring services, vibration management services, and different other uh, productivity improvement services for our customers. And our purpose is to make our customers successful every day and our strategy is to be the trusted partner of choice for our customers. So this slide shows the presence of Aurica globally. So we are currently supporting customers in more than 100 countries across the world and we have our presence in uh, all, all the seven continents including Antarctica. So this is our glo global footprint. Okay, so the agenda for today's presentation would revolve around the outcome based blast. So what are the outcomes which we require from the blasting activities? The first and most important outcome is the vibration management. So if, if there's a lot of vibration which we are uh, generating as, as it was explained in the previous presentation by sir that uh, these are the vibration limits of a particular, uh, particular area as per the DGMS guidelines. So uh, vibration management is the most important parameter which we have to control while blasting and the second outcome will be reducing drilling and blasting cost. So we can reduce the drilling and blasting cost easily but for that we also have to work on the downstream cost as well. We can reduce the drilling and blasting cost by getting coarser fragments but we can't handle that because that will increase our downstream cost. So we have to work in an optimum way where we can reduce the drilling and blasting cost and we can reduce the downstream cost as well by uh, improving the productivity of the uh, machineries which we are having by improving the like, uh, throughput of the crushers or, uh, uh, or other activities which are involved there. And what are the blasting technologies which we are using to get these outcomes? That will be blast design tools. So we have got various blast design tools. We have uh, different softwares where we can simulate the blast, where we can design the blast and we can do different analysis involving uh, vibration uh, prediction. So we can predict the vibration post blast, pre blast sorry. We can predict the vibration pre blast and we can predict the fragmentation as well with the help of our blast design tool. And then we have initiating systems and blast modeling, uh, there are various blast modeling tools to model the cast of the blast, to model uh, different other analytics of the blast, how the profile will be formed. So these are the technologies which are uh, supporting these outcome based blasts and we have different products and services. In terms of services we have advanced vibration management services. So currently we are uh, providing this advanced vibration management services to 7 to 8 customers across India uh, in which involves uh, Tata Steel. We have got 3 sites of Tata Steel where we are providing this advanced vibration management services and those sites are like <coughs> situated at a very close uh, proximity to villages. So there are few villages which are at a distance of less than 100 meters from the site and we are providing these services from last uh, more than last 10 years. And other than that we will be using electronic blasting system to do all these simulations. 
So uh, first thing which comes to our mind is why do we need to control blasting environmental impact? So this slide will answer that question. So first, first and foremost important thing is LTO, license to operate. So we have to manage the LTO conditions and for that we have to com uh, comply to the license conditions, we have to maintain safety in the operations and we have to do the stakeholder management. So the biggest stakeholder for us would be the people who are living in the surroundings. So they are our biggest stakeholders and we have to manage that and the cost of compliance as well. So. Uh, and the other important parameter other than the LTO benefits is maintaining productivity because to operate a mine successfully we have to be productive, we have to uh, always work on improving the productivity of the mines. For that the efficiency of operations and cost of operations and we have to achieve the desired outputs as well. Okay, So this is a video where we will uh, see how bad a blasting can, uh, blasting can have impacts on the uh, surroundings. Can you play the video? So where you can see the blasting is there, but how devastating a blast can go. So the, you can see the machines were there and it has like the fly rock has impacted those machines. Okay, so this was the video just showing that how impactful a blast can be and why do we need to mo be more careful in terms of blasting. Okay, so now we'll discuss about the evolution of initiation systems. So uh, earlier 1830s, before 1830s, what we were doing is we were using uh, goose quills filled with uh, uh, black powder and we were doing the blasting with that. But in 1830s, safety fuse were introduced. With safety fuse was basically uh, black powder covered with yarn. So that was safety fuse and safety fuse was introduced to uh, make the uh, initiation system more reliable and more uh, consistent. So post safety fuse we have introduced electric detonators in 1910 electric, electric detonators came into the picture and uh, electric detonators were introduced to provide more uh, uh, accuracy in the delays and the delays were provided and then from electric detonators in the 1980s we have moved to non electric detonators. From electric detonators, there are various hazards associated with electric detonators. It can fire with any energy, any sort of energy sources provided to it. If it is connected with any sort of energy sources, it will initiate. So we have introduced non-electric detonators in 1980s and currently in 2000s, electronic blasting system was introduced in the market. And right now, where we stand is we are at wireless innovation, which is a web gen, which is a wireless blasting initiation system where we don't require any sort of wire. We can directly put it inside the hole and uh, it will get fired with, with the help of Wi-Fi. We don't ne need to have any sort of wires and connections with it. And this is our patented technology of Aurica. No one else in the whole world has produced any such thing right now. And it is already being implemented at various other uh, sites across the world. So uh, what are the differences between electric detonators, non-electric detonators and electronic detonators and why an electronic detonator is more precise and more accurate in terms of delay. So as you can see in electric detonators, there is a pyrotechnic delay element at the middle in electric and both non-electric. There is a pyrotechnic delay element. So the delay, uh, so the delay time which we provide to the electric detonator, it depends on the burning rate of that pyrotechnic delay element. But in terms of electronic detonator, there is a delay circuit, there is an ASIC chip which provides a digital delay. So the accuracy of electronic detonator is way more, it is less than 0.001% uh, scattering is there in terms of electronic detonator. So that is all because that pyrotechnic delay element is replaced with a digital circuit here.
okay so detonator uh, we'll talk about detonator scattering here so uh, these are the cases in the left side we can see there is a pyrotechnic delayed uh, scatter and in the right side electronic delay scatter pyrotechnic means non electric detonators with uh, shock tube detonators some people might call it as shock tube detonators so non electric detonators if we talk about a uh, if we take a detonator with a delay of 200 millisecond in non electric detonator there will be a scatter of like you can see there is a scatter of from 198 to 202 millisecond so there is a scatter of plus minus 2 millisecond in that detonator but if we talk uh, take the case of non uh, electronic detonator if we take 1000 millisecond uh, delay then the scatter will be less than 1 millisecond but if we take a detonator having one uh, more than 1000 delay in a non electric detonator it will have a scatter of plus minus 20 millisecond so if we are going to have a control in a vibration then non electric detonators are not the solution we have to introduce electronic detonator because the scattering is not there and you, the timing is more precise and more accurate so that you can get the exact results which are possible from electronic detonators so what are the benefits which we get from electronic uh, initiation so first thing is risk management in risk management we can control the vibration easily we can we have a better security because in if we talk about electric or non electric detonators they can be initiated easily but in terms of electronic detonator there is no security threat if someone has stolen that electronic detonators from your side they cannot fire it by any means they will need some hexadecimal code which are present in our systems uh, uh, other than that they won't be able to fire those electronic detonators so they are completely safe and completely secure and we can plan mass blast bigger blasts with the help of electronic detonators because we have flexibility in terms of timing we can provide timing as per our uh, uh, our understandings and whatever we want but in case of non-electric detonators we have to stick to the timings which are already present in those detonators and in terms of productivity we have fragmentation we can control fragmentation we can improve the cast or moment of the blast we can improve the dilution we can work on dilution control as well so moving on i will be sharing few case studies from uh, different mines where we have uh, done work in terms of productivity improvement so so this is a case study from greenco karnul site so uh, the project is currently going on there and we are presenting it here so the main problem statement there was to improve fragmentation and productivity of the operation they were using a drill of uh, 110 mm drill and uh, a hole depth of around 10 to 12 meters so the main concern was to improve fragmentation productivity and to reduce drilling and blasting cost so what what is the solution which we provided them was use of use of electronic detonators with with the use of short blast which is a blast design software and we have uh, with the help of those blast design software and electronic detonators we have planned the blast we have designed and we have got uh, wonderful results and I will show those results in the next slide as well in terms of cost because everyone really focused about the cost at how much cost which, uh, which we have benefited while introducing electronic detonators. So what the value to the customer was the pattern was expanded up to 30% they were earlier using a pattern of 2.4 by 2.8 meter but now we have in, uh, expanded that pattern to 2.7 by 3.2 meter. By, by using the same diameter of the drill, by using the same amount of explosive which were they using, uh, the, the same, every other parameter was remained the same, just the pattern was expanded and we have introduced electronic detonator in place of uh, non-electric detonators. Okay, so here I have shown a value comparison of non-electric versus electronic for that particular site. So as you can see here, the yield was increased by around 23 cubic meter per hole. By, uh, by just introducing, ju just expanding the pattern and introducing electronic detonators. And if you talk about the total explosive cost, the total explosive cost came down to 20.38 rupees per cubic meter. So these are the benefits which we have uh, directly benefited in terms of yield and total explosive cost. And in terms of blasting cost, as you all know, electronic detonator is a bit costly as, uh, as compared to non-electric detonators. So the blasting cost was also reduced, but not that much. But in uh, we have incurred that cost in the total explosive cost we have got the benefit of that in total explosive cost and the drilling cost as well in terms of we talk about drilling cost the drilling cost was decreased by around 14.39 rupees per cubic meter and overall uh, drilling and blasting cost was reduced by 12 percent 
and uh, by 18.68 rupees per cubic meter and here till here we are not talking about the post blast uh, post blast results like uh, the other cycle of fragmentation and other things we are not talking about that if we talk about the secondary blasting as well the secondary blasting was reduced drastically and overall drilling and blasting cost and the secondary blasting cost was reduced by 30 rupees per cubic meter for that particular side and the data was around for a period of two months and we are currently uh, we have converted that side completely from non electric detonators to electronic detonators <coughs> sorry so this was the case study from that side and if we talk about vibration management so uh, this is a video I'll show a video where we have we are doing our advanced vibration management practices in some, one of the site at Tata Steel. So I'll be explaining in between as well what is going on in that video. This is the whole process how we are going to improve the uh, vibration and control the vibration for that particular site. So AVM is the advanced vibration management service which is provided by Aurica as I have already explained in this. So this is the whole process where we can, uh, uh, with the help of which we are generating the site constants and we are like working on prepare a prediction model. So following all this process, now we have come to the last step which is vibration prediction for production shot. Now we have prepared the uh, vibration prediction model and uh, we have already predicted the vibration pre-blast. So this is a short plus software which is a blast design software and we are designing our blast here. We are doing the loading design. We are making everything consistent with the help of this design. We are creating different rules like how much charge we are going to put it at what depth of holes. Here yeah, we are providing initiation uh, design as well, we are providing time to the uh, whole patch, whole blast patch. So uh, by providing the time and uh, designing the whole blast, now we have done the prediction of the blast. So in this software what we can do is we can predict the vibration, we can predict the fragmentation prior to the blast. So this is also one of our digital platform of Aurica where you can uh, have all the records of the blast. It will provide you different insights of the blast. <coughs> so uh, as for the design which is exported to the machines, drilling is going on. And this is the digital tool of Aurica where with, with the help of which we can record the actuals of the blast. This is a charging operation as for our design. So this is how we provide timing to the electronic detonators. We don't have to do such sort of connection which we do in non-electric detonators. We just need to insert it in a logger and we need to, we can time it accordingly whatever the plan is. And then we can connect it to a particular wire and we can do the uh, firing. So the system is completely inherently safe, We it cannot fire on itself without putting that red dongle which is uh, right there. Without that red dongle, it will not provide the hexadecimal codes to the uh, detonator, so it will never fire without that red dongle. So this is a blast which is taken at a distance of like, uh, so this is blast this is a pit office of the mines and we have taken a blast at right the distance of 20 meter and this is a 12 meter bench and the vibration was way under the limit. Here you can see the uh, blast is near to the boundary, 
it is at the distance of 8 meter of the boundary and it was really good blast with the vibration levels at a uh, uh, at a very good level and you can see the villas is downhill at the distance of 60 to 80 meters from there Okay, so that was the whole process how we are doing our advanced vibration management and so these are few case studies, I am sharing a couple of case studies where we have implemented that in limestone segment, in limestone and construction segment that how we can, uh, uh, we have benefited our customers in terms of, in, uh, uh, in terms of extracting their logged ore from an area where with the vibration constraints. So the problem statement for ACL Darlaghat was to perform the control drilling and blasting operation in areas near. As you can see, there are a couple of villages. One village is at a distance of 100 meter and the other village is at a distance of 150 meter from the mines. <coughs> so here we have uh, done our advanced vibration management for designing and execution of blast and we, we have predicted the blast, we have predicted the results uh, to com comply with the statutory limits and we have deployed uh, various advanced survey tools as well to measure the uh, deviation in the holes to do the laser profiling and all. And the value which we have give given to the customers, safe and efficient conduct of drilling and blasting operation in the critical areas without any complaints from any of those villages. And we have approximately, uh, we have unlocked 1 million ton of high grade limestone in 9 months period which was logged and they were unable to do blasting in that particular benches. So we have uh, gone with our advanced vibration management tool and we have logged that ore from those areas. Uh, across 1 million ton of ore was logged within a period of 9 months. And the size of blast was increased by 2% uh, by 2 times as they were uh, like taking a blast of around 20 to 25 holes. And we have just doubled that size of the blast. We have taken 50 holes at a time. And <coughs> And with the help of that, we were able to convert it, uh, to extract the whole area in a uh, nine month period. And there's one more case study from uh, JK Siemens uh, Nimbahera, where we were having the similar scenario, where one villa is situated at 100 meter and uh, another was at 140 meter from the site. And we have done the, we have, uh, and the vibration limit, which was there for those villages was one point, uh, was two millimeter per second. So we have, put that limit under 1.5 millimeter per second and we have extracted the area uh, and increased the blasting by four times, blasting size by four times. Suppose we, they were having a 25 blast holes and we were, we have converted that to a 100 holes patch. So these are the things which we have done here and the production was, production rate from both the mines was increased twofold in six months. So there were two mines there and we have converted that mines to uh, electronic blasting system for those particular benches which were critical to vibration. So these are the case studies which we have done in limestone segment and other than that we are right now uh, uh, performing our uh, AVM services in Ramco cement as well in Tamil Nadu. So there we have, uh, they have been our customer since last two to three years and they were using electronic detonators continuously in the areas where uh, vibration constraint were there. They have, they were having few villages there and they were having few industrial structures as well near to the patch. So we have been doing that there since last. Okay, so now we are open for questions. If anyone is having any doubts, thank you very much. We have made a very nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Ipo ande yeno dia advantage pati yada kerdi kerdi kekala. Panna de percent cost korean chulir kare. Mige trial blast yada. What is the cost of electron detonation? Uh, actually, I can't just uh, quote the cost right away, but. Uh, we can uh, like we can discuss on that in a separate platform adu vandu 1400 rupees nenikira electron detonator idu vandu nama ella palai kaalathile nam aaluga yaar inda weight vechavanga theriyum inda thiriyila patta vechittu beedila patta vechu oduvaangala ovvonna vedikkum illa adha mari vedikkiradnala nammalku vandu volume daastiya varungrar adhavadhu cost daastiya irundhalum vedikkum bodhu sound romba kammiya irukum adhe mari kuli to kuli vandu romba thalli vechikalam so, Kuli one the out and one the Nala Varun Solanga, our Sarita Kate Solanga, Nuthina was middle or Peria Mindrike, 
இவங்க கம்பெனியில் நான் இந்த மாதிரி இந்த டெட்னேட்டர் நாங்கள் வாங்கிக்கிறோம் எங்கள் குவாரி பக்கத்தில் வீடு இருந்ததுன்னா இவங்க அந்த பர்மிஷன் வாங்கி கொடுப்பாங்களான்னு சியால கமிட்டியில் வாங்கி கொடுப்பீங்களான்னு கேள்வி Sorry. He is asking a question. Uh, no, sir, I haven't you have shown an example. There are two villages, one at 100 meters and 140 meters, doing blasting. As per existing uh, local, uh, this thing, this is not permitted. Okay. How to go about? How you will get permission? That is good. What he wants to know is, they got a mine which has got about 140 meters, uh, I mean, nearby inhabitants. Okay. Uh, he wants to know whether he could uh, conduct the blast and to see that the vibration is not there, number one. Number two, will you be able to get the permission from the authorities, statutory authorities? So we can perform the trial blast and we can prove the results. But in, uh, in case of authorities, we, were, we are not uh, someone to like uh, go to and take the permission from authorities. But we can conduct the trials and we can get the results done directly, which we are uh, giving at other sites. That is why they do the vibration and help them. But if they do the approval, they can't do it. If they do the government, they can't do it. That's why they do the government. That's why they do the government. That's why they do the report. That's why they do the report. That's why they do the report. அவங்க வந்து இன்வால்வ் ஆக மாட்டாங்க ரிப்போர்ட் மட்டும் அவங்க கொடுப்பாங்க அந்த ரிப்போர்ட்டை நம்ம சப்மிட் பண்ணி நம்ம கன்வின்ஸ் பண்ணணும் டவுட்ஸ் இருந்தால் அவங்க எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணி கொடுப்பாங்க தேங்க்யூ சார் வேற ஏதாவது டவுட் இருந்தால் கேளுங்க வைப்ரேஷன் இட் இஸ் பர்மிசபிள் லிமிட் ஆர் மோர் இஸ் ஆஸ்கிங் வைப்ரேஷன் இஸ் வித் இன் த பர்மிசபிள் லிமிட்ஸ் Okay, uh, so as I have seen, uh, shown in the second case study, the vibration limit which we have kept, kept was less than 1.5 mm per second. Because it is a distance of 100 to 140 meters, so the frequency will be a bit less. So the vibration has to be below 5 mm per second as per the DGMS guidelines. But in the, that case, since you have to control the sentiments of the people, so you have to keep it as, as less as we can. So we have put it below 1.5 mm per second. Thank you. Thank you very much for your nice presentation.